and welcome to the one percent club great to see everybody coming in hot here hey sorry about last week for those of you that were here i was flying uh 25 hours and lost 10 hours also so it was like 35 hours of travel so i did miss last week but drew ran it for me did a great job thank you uh, drew everybody so uh anyways i'm just logging in here great to see you i'm over the jet lag it was uh uh, a lot of you know I was in South Africa, then the UK, then Madrid, and then back to Puerto Rico. So I uh, I let my beard grow out, but Kathy said I had to shave it all except for this here. So good to see you guys. We'll get this off by Friday. I'm just kind of having some fun here. All right, let's get this party started. So I talked to a gentleman who sent me a text. I want to read it to you. And uh, welcome to the 1% Club. Bye, guys. By the way, what's the 1% Club? I was I always define this, and so I wanted to find it. You know, it's basically I'm trying to teach you guys how to do what the 99% of agents won't do, right? So uh, to live the way they'll never live, to be a one percenter. And that's what makes America great is the fact that we do this kind of stuff. And so I'm going to actually break down what it is that you should be doing if you're a part of this 1% club to take your business to the next level. But before I do that, I want to read you a text I received last week because it kind of touched my heart. And I thought, man, this is what it's all about. So let me uh, get in here. I received a text from a gentleman, and I'm going to read it word for word. Um, um, and this is, and 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 you'll you'll see. It says, I didn't want to quit my job in IT just to have another job to sell. I kept on looking until I found EXP, the only brokerage that has rev share component in it. That was six years ago. It wasn't easy, but I I knew I was with the right people after seeing you and other leaders in the company. I kept going to events like yours at EXP Con. Although I had nobody in my group, but I eventually I learned how to the art of inviting and the importance of hosting events. I focused on inviting and I connecting with good people who really support and develop them into leaders. And um, he said, I want my people to have rev share, not just me. My organization is now 343 agents. Isn't that cool? That is cool. I can get emotional. I have 29 frontline agents. This is the guy who failed and failed and failed until he freaking figured it out. And, and he's like, you know, I'm at the right place for me and I'm going to figure it out. He would go to EXP Con by himself. He would come to Cabo by himself. He would go to shareholders by himself. And so the cool thing is that agent is here with us today. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start off today's and I'm going to kind of interview you, Hugh. So Hugh, uh, new, new Yen. Hugh, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. How you doing? Yeah. Brand, I'm so excited to be here with everybody. How are you? How's everybody? I love it. I love your story, Hugh, because, you know, you, you, you had to earn it. You had to figure it out. Nobody else here had to do that. They all had it handed to them on a silver platter. But you, Hugh, had to actually work for it. And I'm kidding. I'm teasing everybody who's watching this. <laughs> Brent Conley's on here. He's a rock star. Scott Zimmer from Cabo's busting his buns. Tahoe Tony from, from Tahoe. Shelly's on here. From uh, North Carolina or Montana or Puerto Rico. I don't know where Shelly's from anymore. Jackson uh, is on here from Chico. Just so many great people that are on here. Look around. David Mills. Wow. But Hugh, I want to interview you real quick. You know, what was it that caused you to hang in there? And then what finally, you know, tell us your story a little bit. And what 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 did you finally just kind of get it? And it started to come together for you. Yeah. Um, Ren, to be honest, it's, it's difficult, right? Especially when you come from, you know, a, a background with no sale experience, I, I, I would say. Right? But 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 like I, I told you in the story, I, I just cannot afford to, you know, quit my job and then go to another job. Although this is a great job. Don't, don't get me wrong. Sale is an amazing career. But at the end of the day, uh, if you don't know how to scale it, it's still a job, right? So I really, really looking for a, a way to, you know, like exit, if you will. And um, 
Sorry, I totally forgot your question. But <laughs> the question is, how did you get your breakthrough from going to just you going to events and and you and you had nobody in your group for a while, and then you finally kind of figured it out. And you started to grow. What was your breakthrough moment? What was it for you, Hugh? What got you through the hard times and got it to work for you? Um, I think I think one of my breakthrough moment, Brent, is actually one in one of your um, earlier cowboy event. Right. I, I used to think that, you know, brand is so far for me to reach. I could never be brand. But, you know, and then and then so many other leaders. Right. But after going to Cabo, man, you know, I, I, I see these people on stage and then I get to hang out with them on the pool. You know, these are just regular, very nice people and they're willing to help. You know, these are people just like me. And and I don't know, something just clicked in my mind is that, you know, you know, if if, if brand can do it, you know, if if um if, if Sue can do it, if Mark can do it, you know, Palm is here and they're willing to share, they're willing to help me, you know, what, what excuse do I have not to, you know, go ahead and just set aside, you know, a couple hours a week on top of my investing, on top of my, um, you know, on top of my, you know, regular sale business, you know, just set a couple hours a week, you know, simply learn to invite people correctly, right, to event, you know, to Jeff and Amanda, which is my sponsor. I just learned how to invite people to goodness, right? Just really, really try to connect good people together. And then and then if you can do that, you know, Jeff can do the closing, Brent can do the closing, Amanda can do the closing. You know, I do my part of connecting good people together and, that's, and then that's it. I don't worry about the outcome, Brent, whatever you join or not, but I really want to connect you with good people and then the, the rest will take care of itself. I love it. I, what I feel is love and warmth coming from the man's heart and a genuine care for people. It's the old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I instantly pick up on Hugh's love, right? And the Bible says, you if you don't have love, you're a resounding gong. You know, it's like, get away from me. People, you know, people pick up on that authenticity and Hugh, you've got it. Now, Jeff and Amanda, are they uh, white spear? Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, they are. Wonderful, wonderful. So they had events. You didn't have to create the events, but you brought people to the events. And then you let people get a vision or not get a vision. It just started to grow from you. At first, it was you. Then there was 10. Then it was 100. Now it's 347. And uh, so here's the deal. Next year, Hugh, I want, would you speak at Cabo and share your story in front of everybody? Would you do that for me? Oh, I can. I would do it. So you used to go to Cabo and go, man, I'd love, look at all these people. Now you're going to be one of the presenters. And that's available to anyone. And you just got to take action and say, I'm in. For example, Teresa. She didn't know I was going to talk about her right now. Teresa, unmute yourself. You know, Teresa from San Jose. She's he's not talking about me. I'm talking about you. Okay, just so when I, I decided to, to show my my face, and it was most of the time. Just you my should have shared your face. When you share your face, you get caught on. You get caught on, you're fine. Don't worry about your face. Your face, you're beautiful. You look great. Doesn't matter if you had a granola bar. We're, we're good. But so here, here's the deal. I challenge people to do events. Teresa, what are you doing next month in March? I'm putting my first event, inviting agents to take a... You know, I'm I'm copying you now. I'm 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 listening now. I mean, I'm I've been so stubborn, and I've just been watching people. And I said, okay, it, it does work. I just follow your playbook. You've been telling me just do this, and so now I'm being obedient. Now I'm being obedient. I'm just it's gonna like, do what, what you say. What, I'm not even gonna think. I'm not even gonna think whether it's gonna do, work or what. I'm just gonna do. Mr. Miyagi had it right. There is no think, only do. You know, and so uh, basically you're doing an event. You're like, well, whoa, what do we train on? I go, why don't you do a listing master class? She's like, done. Well, Who would I get? I go, let's invite. I thought of some people. How about Sean? Um, Sean Work. Um, she She's like, yeah, it'd be great. And it's happening on the 14th of March. I believe it's the 14th from my memory from your flyer. How do I make a flyer? Just make one. Just your your first one's gonna suck and then they get better, right? Your first meeting will be okay. It may be great and then they get better. So there's no magic, only motion needed here. So Hugh, I'm proud of you. Teresa, I'm proud. I'm proud of everybody on here. Scott Zimmer just flew to Bend, Oregon. He's on fire, but he lives in Cabo. He's back down in Cabo. Uh, he just hooked me up with golf. Thank you, Scott Zimmer. And uh, so- you're muted, buddy. I can't hear you, Scott. You're muted, buddy, if you're talking. You're still muted. Okay. Right. I just see Trish Espy. It only took me a year to get Trish Espy. Hi, Trisha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. 
You work at it. it. Took Keller Williams nine years to get me to go to Keller Williams, right? And and so sometimes it's just timing. Gene Frederick says, right? People, why won't they come? They're happy. I was happy at Remax until I wasn't. So, anyways, um, Hugh, any final comments before we switch gears in this last part of today's One Percent Club? I just want to kind of highlight you. I loved your story of man. It wasn't working for a long time, and then I started bringing people, and I let the events do what they did, and I wasn't worried about the outcome. I just want to get them with good people. Anything else you want to share that that could encourage people, Hugh? Um, yeah, so I, I would say, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, this is like, this is not like a commission check, right? It's not like you get a buyer and a seller and you get a $10,000, that commission check. This is slow, you know, this is slow money in the beginning, right? But if you just keep working at it, you know, that 200 is going to become 300 and then 500 is going to become a thousand. And then it's keep, just keep going consistent every month and every month. So you have to have that mindset of an, an, an investor, if, if you will, Brent. Right. I invest in houses. Right. But now I have, you know, ESP gave me a, another chance. I invest in people like really, really good people. And 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 I just keep thinking up at that. Right. Just keep investing in people, pull, pull your heart out. And then especially, you know, be um, in order for me to grow. I, I need to help other people grow as well. Right. So be available for, for your team, especially your leader. Right. I, everybody in my group know that, you know, hey, you know, it doesn't matter how busy who he is. If you have a spot prospect for him to talk to he's available all the time from two to five if he doesn't available he will make sure he's available for me so my team know that from two to five every monday to friday i'm available for them and they just keep so, setting me booking me up with a the system yep that's a system i'm available monday through friday from two to five p.m but this group doesn't have to wonder that's the system i love it you Man, yeah. thank you. Anything else you want to share? I don't. I don't want. I don't want to cut you short. I. I can just sit here and listen to him. I, I want to join him at whatever he's doing, just because of, you know, what's coming out. Any anything yeah. else, you? Um, and and keep and then keep your excitement, right? You know, be, uh, just like Brent say, um, Brent, I I study your 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 material. You know, people they 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 get infected by your excitement. If and you have to really understand the product. You know, we selling houses, but in agent attraction, you know, we selling EXP. So as a leader, you have to really really understand our company, our culture, our people, and then from that, you know, you have to show people the 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 excitement, the 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 energy. Right. We need to have that. I think some of us, you know, we get complacent, me included. You know, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I kind of get, you know, like, you know, kind of lose my fire, if you will. We need to catch that on. Right. Not for you, but for the people around you. So keep keep on your fire, guys. I love it. Hugh, thank you for sharing, man. You're amazing. Um, thank you. Man, I have so many people on here, you know. Uh, Stephen Pugh, Jason Hamilton, Isaac Hansen. What's up, guys? Dylan Nanaka from Maui, Chris Fritch from Minnesota. There's so many cool people on here. Kevin Johnson. I could go on. Anthony Wheaton. What's up, brother? Hey, real quick, David from Park City. Your your mic is hot. Scott Zimmer in Cabo. Your mic is hot. And Hugh, um, let's go ahead and get because what will happen is you forget your mic's on. You take a phone call, then we all have to listen to the phone call. So I'm just letting you know your mic is hot. You just have to uh, mute your mic there scott zimmer uh make sure you you meet your mic there thanks guys okay so we're gonna switch gears and hugh thank you man that was awesome love you buddy it's a, a film the love so again what is the one percent club you're doing with the 99 percent won't do can't do just refuses to do that's okay but you're going to live the way they'll never live and, and define what that is for you what does it mean for you the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it with those you want to give to love to support to provide to make your sister's house payment to make your 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 aunt and uncle's house payment, to pay off your mom and dad's house, to support orphanages. We built, Kathy and I built a home in the mountains for a family. We just did it. Well, what's the name of your foundation? Don't have one. We just paid for a house, built the whole thing. It's done. The family lives in it now. They were living in a, in a, 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 a railroad thing. Someone put a railroad container and they made a home out of it. And now they live in a home. And it was fun for Kathy and I to do. And so, man, who who's waiting for a life to be changed? There's people we take care of that can't get out of bed. They're they're they've gone through surgeries, they cannot provide for themselves. And to be able to to help them and to buy them groceries, to make their rent payment, to make their car payments, to to renew all their real estate stuff and to do this 
all kinds of times. And so I try not to talk about it, but I mean, there's so many cool things you could do if you feel step up. So what does it mean to step up? What does it mean to be a one percenter? So I wrote down some thoughts today. Number one, and you hit it, it's adding value at every level. What do you mean? It means really being concerned about your TC. It means really being concerned about your personal assistant. It means making opportunities for people. Like recently, I was able to make an opportunity for Drew. And he is, he, it looks like he could be making about 30,000 a month from this opportunity I found from him. And he's like, is this okay? I'm like, dude, go, go. I want you to have a great life. Go. It's like, well, gee, if he makes 3,000 a month, I might lose him. Yeah, I get to hire somebody else and bless somebody else. Don't be afraid to lose people, but we, don't you want people to create opportunity for you? So how does that work? You create opportunities for them. Well, I don't know how to do that. You, you do what you can, when you can. Write that down. Do Sometimes it's buying someone a bag of groceries, you guys. It used, I started there. Now I'm able to do bigger things. But it's really being concerned for like the secretaries at Regis. They don't work for me. I give them bonuses every Christmas. They don't even work for me. I just give them piles of cash and they cry. They freaking cry. They get up and they hug me. That's not a bad deal either. But like I I give bonuses to other people's employees when they don't because Regis is just a big company. They're like, we ain't giving them bonuses. And so this is the kind of stuff you want to do. You want to add add level, add value at every level. Because when I say that, you think, okay, how do I help my agents? How do you help your title rep? How do you help your painter? How do you help the guy at the tire place who just fixed your tire? I mean, you just like, how can I help people? When you when you add more value than anyone in the room, like right now you're paid and direct proportion amount of value you bring the marketplace. And if you don't like what you're being paid, bring more value to the marketplace. Uh, I've told the story before. You guys have heard it. The crown molding guy. I'm flying in first class to Atlanta. What do you do? I'm a crown molding guy. Oh, great. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. We're talking more. And uh, the more this guy talks, the more I realize he's kind of a big deal. I go, how big is your crown molding thing? He goes, oh, we're the biggest in all of Atlanta. I said, really? How long have you been doing it? 30 years? He has not been doing it 10 years. And you're the biggest in all. Atlanta's a big old city. He goes, yeah. I go, how'd you do it? He goes, it was easy, actually. He goes, people are always late. They don't show up. They leave early. They don't get the job done on time. So we showed up early. We always showed up when we said we'd word, and we'd stay later if we had to. We always got the jobs done on time, and 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 so we we did something that just wasn't. And we added people do that could count on us, and then they referred us. And and so John Maxwell says, look around and go, what are the champions doing, and then do more than they're doing. Like dissect their business, find out what they're doing, and then plus it. You want to be right? I mean, there's some restaurants you go to. You ever go to like a breakfast place and there's like 20, 30 people inside it's full. And there's maybe two, three, four, five groups waiting outside the restaurant, even if it's cold. And they're waiting to get into this breakfast spot because it's a good one. Everybody wants to go have breakfast there. Well, I've been to some where they come out and they serve hot coffee and and hot chocolate to people's kids and to people outside. Like there's a way to add more value than to sit there. We'll call your number when you're ready. What if you, it's, it's like, who does that? The most successful restaurants in the world do that. They bring them some orange juice, some apple juice, some hot chocolate. They, they bring little treats and snacks. So you could do it in the restaurant business. You can do it in the crown. Well, you can do it in the real estate business. Right. And so think about it and, and get creative. Um, adding more value. Do you do you do creative dinners? I can't afford that. Do barbecues. Get some ballpark hot dogs and some hamburgers and invite people over. Just hey, we're gonna grill up some burgers and some. Why don't you come over this weekend? People just want to be invited over, man. You don't have to have T-bone steaks and lobster and flying stuff from Maine, or you don't have to show off. I mean, if you have it and you want to bless people, fine. You know, are you with me? And you could also think, well, my home's not that nice. Well, is Hughes' home's nice? Yeah, Hughes got a nice place. Hey, you can we have a barbecue at your place this weekend? You invite some people all by, and you actually can use 
Mark Verzel's house, Pam Teresi's house, Frank Crandall's house. You know, it, someone may have a, I get it. Your house may not be a good situation right now, but don't let it stop you. And then you can invite people over. It doesn't have to be 40. I can't feed 40 people. Invite four people over. Who said it had to be 40? So let me let me ask you, if you're going to add more value, you're a culture creator. Write that down. Am I a culture creator? Teresa is creating culture in San Jose. You know what EXP event is going to take place in San Jose in March? Just Teresa's. She's a culture creator. She's a torch bearer. Write that down, torch bearer. Number two, number one was adding value. Number two, you want to be um, a one percenter? Then basically you, and by the way, Rob, fair warning, I sent you a couple text messages of some things I'm going to ask you to show in a little bit. Not right now. You got ready. Be, you're ready. Okay. You know what I do. Um, but number two, I want you to be a thermostat, not a thermometer, right? You, if he's a leader, you got to stay strong. Step up. Don't go up and down with the environment like most agents. I'm excited and depressed. I'm excited and depressed. Up and down like a, a being tossed to and fro like a wave of the ocean. You got to, you got to. Commander, I got this. You have to stand strong and stay focused. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and start show the first one, Rob, that I sent you about vision. And uh, right there, make your vision so clear that your fears become irrelevant. Like, what is your vision? What is your mission? My mission is to love people and to blow their mind. Whether they come to EXP or not, when they cross my path, they're going to be better off. They're going to love being around me because I'm going to love them like they've never been loved in their life. And I always tell people, if you come to EXP, great. If you don't, great. I'm going to help you. If you want, don't come to EXP. And I, I bust my buns to help them meet another company. Go ahead and pull that back down there, Rob. That's awesome. But you want to be a thermostat set that thing not a thermometer number three write this down what, what you focus on expands if you focus on the problems you're going to have problems you focus on why your husband's a jerk he's going to be a bigger jerk you focus on how your wife's letting you down you're probably going to get divorced right if you if you nitpick your church and my church does this and my church does that and look at your face you little sour puss you know listen to me there are no perfect purchase churches. There are no perfect people. There's no perfect sponsor at eXp. There's no perfect state broker. You're not perfect. Do you want people to have grace for you and be merciful? The size of the window you give through, the size of the window you get through. If you give grace, you receive it. If you give love, a whole lot. There's a saying, I can't find any friends. You know, If you go looking for friends, you can't find any. But if you just simply be a friend, they're everywhere. How can I love, serve, and give? And, and so it's a healthy, you know, ego. People don't have to love you. It's your job to love people. If they don't receive your love, that's on them. It's okay. You're going to be kind, loving, and when you make a mistake, say, I'm sorry. But again, as a leader, as a one percenter, what you focus on expands. Focus on the good. Focus on what you're grateful for. Focus on what is working. We all have I could everyone everyone raise your hand and tell me one horrible thing happening in your life right now? Oh, Tony, hold on, I was kidding. It was like a metaphor. Tony's like, I'll raise my hand. I love that. Tony, your hand went right up. What I mean is, we can all say it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it personally, but <laughs> right, we all have stuff happens. You know, we all have. You know, you just did Christmas with your family. You know, you know your friends. You get to pick your family. You, your <laughs> that's your aunt. That's your uncle, old uncle, you know, so-and-so, he's a little weird, you know, and, and so you, you don't get to pick that, but you do get to pick that inner circle. You get to pick, you get to decide, who am I about? Am I a Grant Cardone kind of person? Am I Tony Rob, my John Maxwell kind of person? Am I Francis Chan wrote the book, Crazy Love, Dr. Lance Wallnow, one of my heroes? You know, who is it that I want to emulate and be like? And they're not perfect. You know, you can put them on a pedestal in the end. It doesn't matter if it's a famous movie star or some public figure. We're just people in progress. And that's what Hugh said. Hugh, you're now one of those people that people are like, oh, my God, I can never be like you. And he was like, I don't know if I could ever do this. And now I'm inviting him to speak at Cabo next year, you know, and tell a story. It's amazing, Hugh. And so you dare to believe and hang in there and improve. 
Uh, by the way, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. That's the biggest room. That's why you could do this. Like, what's the largest room in the world? Is it the Taj Mahal? Is it the Sistine Chapel? No, it's the room for improvement. You could be a better husband. You could be a better wife. You could be a better friend. You could be a better real estate agent. You could be a better agent. You are not stuck being you unless you say so. I personally think everybody on this thing can change. That's what the 1% Club's about. Um, so what you focus on expands. I would focus on gratitude and what's good and pure and dwell there. The Bible even talks about that, controlling your mind, your thoughts, and focus on what's good, pure, right, beautiful. Focus on those things. And don't become a grumpy, crotchety old sourpuss, cranky real estate broker. Yeah, and we've all met them. We're like, man, if I never so so-and-so's listings again, I'd be better off for it. Number Number four, write this down. You want to become a room lifter. A room lifter. And what does that mean? It means, and, and write this down, become a Zoom lifter. Like Darren Isaac, you don't know this, but I watch you all the time because you get the cool boat thing behind you. And it's just easy to see you. But I'm always watching you, man. I'm always watching you. Know, you watch me. I watch you all the time, buddy. Um, I watch Tahoe Tony all the time. He's got the cool pro insight background, the Lake Tahoe thing. So, so, you know, so like I didn't just happen to have a colorful picture behind me just because I looked out and had a color. I, I went and bought that because I that's my office. This is where you guys see me. And so what's behind you matters, right? Now, you could do, if you think, oh, I, I don't have a really nice house or whatever, or, or the situation's not good or the house is messy. Blur what's behind you. Look at Jackson. Jackson has a blurry background, super acceptable in the world of Zooms. You could just kind of blur it out. It's cool. The blurred background is a cool thing. but. Man, don't go do this out in the garage. We have two by fours and you should have a sheetrock garage, but there's there's no sheetrock. We're looking at the two by fours like varicose veins. Nobody likes looking at varicose veins. Nobody likes looking at your nasty sheetrock, unsheetrocked garage. So it, I'm not picking anyone. I'm not, not looking at anyone's background in particular, but what you have behind you and what you're wearing you know, like I gotta be honest with you, I'm gonna in a pair of cotton gym shorts right now, but you never know it, right? Let's talk about what Brent's wearing. You know, it doesn't matter what's here up is what you're showing, right? And so those things matter. I want to say be a room lifter, be a zoom lifter. What do you mean a room lifter? Well, Teresa's gonna walk in that room next month on the 14th of March. And and is the leader, it's her job to raise the temperature of the room. And you don't come in, all right, everybody, let's go. You don't come in like a maniac. You just come in with some authority and you prayed out in the parking lot before you go and yes, God, give me the words. And then he thought about it. You put some music on, maybe you get a little boom box and pretend this is a microphone and you Bluetooth to the microphone and then you crank on some music, you have a little music on, and you know, just some kind of, and you turn it up as people come in, then you cut it, you introduce the speaker, and they do great. And when it's over, you have somebody ready to turn the music back on and you, you think these things through through and you look and you go, wow, are my lights out? Like there's a light bulb that's out that freaks me out. Even that you know me, that light bulb went out yesterday. And right. And, and these light bulbs are tricky in Puerto Rico. They're, I literally call an electrician to replace my light bulbs. I know that's really snotty and bad, but if you lived here, you're like, it's not a normal light bulb. And so, and I don't want to deal with it, but when I'm doing an event, I, like in Maui, I sat down and pointed out nine different light bulbs are out in the room. I'm like, oh, I didn't notice that. I'm like, I did. Because if you have a dark part of the room, no bueno. I mean, these, boom, things got to snap. That's why I'm sitting in a really well-lit area. It matters what people see. It matters. So um, open houses, when you walk in the open house, do you lift the temperature? Even if you're like, what's well, not? It's a couple of bankers. I'm just stopping by. When you walk in, when you go to church, are you a room lifter? Do you lift this? Oh my God, Pam's here. Lisa Sears is here. I love Lisa Sears. Dave, Dave Straitman's here. I love him, even though he's on the phone. Hey, Dave, I see you. See, I think I don't watch you guys. Big old smile. Brett Conley's here. And if you know Brett Conley, he's an amazing guy. But what, so when you enter the room, what do people say? You know, what do they say? Like, well, Brent, I'm not you. They don't say much. I go, you're all amazing. But the problem is, you don't believe, believe you're amazing. I don't mean in a cocky, arrogant way. But man, when, when Jared Davis enters the room, you know somebody entered the room, right? And so Jim Jim Fury, you know, you, you, you could, there's just, 
this ability to make people feel special. And the way you do it is you don't look over their shoulder while you're talking to them. Who else is in the room? Can I talk to you? No. Love the one you're with. Even though you got a big group, Hugh, 347 people, I get a sneaking suspicious suspicion where people with you, they feel special. How do you make people special? You look them in the eyes and you stay focused. And people tap you in the shoulder and you go, just a minute. You don't even, you know, because they're interrupting. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I get it. They're excited. But you say, just a minute. And you stay focused with you. But this is a, a new agent. He doesn't even know how to sell a house. He's not... That ain't what it's about. You treat everybody the same. Everybody's deeply, incredibly valuable as a human soul. Do you want people to discard you because, you know, maybe you didn't do it? You know, like, Patty, I don't know how many uh, homes you sell in Laguna Beach, but if you if you and I discarded people because, oh, they're they're not a big player, they sell four homes a year. Well, I used to sell four homes a year. Then I sold 19. But if someone just, we all know it's like to be brushed off, to ignore, to, you know, and we're not perfect. I'm sure I've made a mistake. I had of someone who came to me at EXPCon and said, you totally ignored me at shareholders. And I've, my feelings have been hurt for five months. I said, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. And I didn't mean to do it. I guess I did, you know, and they felt shafted by me. I apologize. We made up and moved on and, and that's okay. But, you know, Patty, People want to be loved by you. And, and so good for you. And you you have the ability to make people feel special. Uh, Pam Tracy, one of my dear friends, I've known her for 40 years. That's a long time. We go back and Pam's got that ability to love people. You all have it. You just got to let it out. No, that's not me. Yes, it is you. So um, I got two more things to say. and We're out of here. Value progress over perfection. So do you have a YouTube channel? If you're a one percenter, you have a YouTube channel. Just open it. I don't even have anything. That, do a Zoom with me and put it up. I'll, I'll be your first Zoom recorded that you put on your YouTube channel. Just start it. Do you have a podcast? Just, just do one. Say, I'm going to interview you. Call you up. Hugh, can I interview you? You'd be my first podcast. And see, leaders, they have a YouTube channel. Do you think, do you think a one percenter? How, how, do, am I a one percenter? Do you have a YouTube channel? I don't know how to do that. Call a 14-year-old, a 16-year-old, <laughs> your own child. Do you want to have dinner? You're going to build daddy a YouTube channel before 6 o'clock or you don't get dinner. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Yeah, I would. Totally, man. They're your kids, man. You can do whatever you want to them. Just don't hurt them, right? But it's okay, right? And so um, do you have um, – are you doing events? Rob, go ahead and put up real quick. Like Teresa, we challenge uh, people to do events in your local areas. So um, again, this this uh, nope, not that one. What are we looking at, Rob? <laughs> Looks like a Valentine's Day thing. So we're going to show the schedule um, that I sent you. There it is. There it is. So I stole this from one of my agents in Portland. She created this template, and I looked at what we were doing. I go, wow, hers is better than ours. And I took a picture of theirs and said, let's copy it. I just got copy mine. They're like, what topics? There are the topics. Steal my cop topics and rearrange them. Or you could do the same topic every month. I don't care. It doesn't matter if you're in Tucson or, or Nashville or Maryland and you do the same topic, become a marketing superstar this April, you know? And so we're about to put up all the speakers for the fall, but there it is right there. I'm going to take that down. But, that, but if you're a one percenter, you do events. Now, in Hugh's case, Jeff and Amanda do events, and he can plug into them. So that that's a benefit. You don't even have to do it. It's Stephanie's and Teresa's case in San Jose. She's the leader. I don't have the in Sacramento, there was nothing. I just started doing events. You do it at a tattoo company or mortgage company, it's free. And you get a few people in a room and you stuff it. It only holds 15 people. And then we said I could only have 15 people. Oops, 30 showed up. Sorry. They'll let you do it and let their, their title rep talk into work there. It, what mortgage broker would be sad to have 30 people show up? They're going to be so excited to get in front of 30 agents. They're going to love you for a long time. They'll be so great. Finally, number six, one percenters plan. They execute. They plan and they execute. So I'm going to help you with the little planning secret. I, I didn't tell Rob I was going to do this. So Rob, if you could pull it up, and this is not ready to be unveiled until Cabo. But we're going to let you have a sneak peek because you're a one percenter. So, Rob, can you pull up Build 
event24.com. We're unleashing it at Cabo, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek because I'm glad you're here. And so Rob is going to do the old share screen and pulled up build event 24.com. So here it is. So Cape Town, South Africa, it sold out and we just did it. That's where I was. Hawaii's coming up May 7th and 8th. Vancouver, the 8th and the 9th. Los Angeles is the 25th and the 26th. Salem is the 26th and 27th. Dallas is going to be on the map. We'll know the dates of Dallas uh, by this Friday. Detroit, August 1st and 2nd. New Jersey, August 1st and 2nd. Orlando, the 2nd through the 5th. They're doing Build by Sea. It's going to be on a cruise ship. Um, it's going to be super fun. I'm personally going to go to that one from, from wherever I am. Charlotte, September 11th. Um, hey, Rob, I need to tell you. So you can see this is a work in progress, progress for perfection. In Charlotte, they cut bill down to one day. It's going to be September 11th. So we'll take the 12th off. That's why I did what you just saw was a sneak peek. Now, Rob, can you pull that back up again? I hate to do this to you. I'm going to pull it uh, back off real quick. Put it back up. I apologize. But I want to show you one thing. When you see those, not only do you have the dates, click on, for example, Orlando. So he's going to go click on Orlando, boom, and it's build 24, expand Orlando at sea, build at sea. There's there's the three hosts. Oh, go back up to the top. So you have um, Veronica. Let's scroll down a little bit to the three hosts there. You got Gil Ramos, Carlos German, and Veronica Figueroa. Then you scroll down. They got uh, Michael Burt. They got myself. They got Gogo Benke. Everyone could go. You could go to any of these locations. Now, I recommend you. And they got the um, registration. They got the cabin rates. And they got full cool things about the boats. Giant boat. There'll be additional speakers at this event. And so, again, all this is going live at Cabo. So I just gave you guys a sneak peek. Okay, you can pull it off now, Rob. Thank you. Anyways, I hope this was helpful today. It's great to be back. I love you all. We'll see you next week at 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. And in about three minutes, we're going to do the mastering sales portion for 10 minutes. So we'll see you there. Love you guys. Peace out. We'll see you in three minutes. Bye. Bye.